Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to visit with Rufus and Lisa. The name of their channel is Beyond Authentic. They are a trans couple that is trying to lose weight together. And I think you'll find their story super interesting. But before we jump into their story, let me read a comment from one of my viewers. The name of this uh, viewer is My Bong Tipped Over. Love the name. He says, Jesse, I love your sensitive nature. I think it's important considering what you do here and who your audience is, but I don't think you should be as surprised that people are just making rational, objective truths and comments. This is because a comment said something to the effect of, hey, you need to lose 120 pounds to one of the YouTubers that we were showing yesterday. And so this is kind of his response to that video yesterday. If someone comes in smelling bad, can no one say they smell? If someone comes in dirty, can no one say they're dirty? It can be a comment made out of shock or concern, especially if the last time you've seen a person, they weren't what they appear kind of thing. It's a cultural thing, like I've said before. Americans just want to be offended and victims, and we continue to cultivate it. That's why shows like Secret Eaters are so much better than My 600 Pound Life because they can joke and make light of situations without being caught up in being so offended all the time, safe places, etc., etc. It cultivates weak mindsets and then we wonder why Americans struggle with mental health. I know you won't like this comment, perhaps you'll delete it, but we aren't trying to be offensive, Jesse. We're trying to be real. Anyway, love your videos and all that you do. You rock. I hope everyone has a great walk today. Don't let anything get you down. So whenever I show um, a video and whenever I show comments and then on that comment, I say, God, that's really rude. Don't go that route, right? I'm still sharing the comment. So I'm not necessarily against not giving you the ability to share your comment or giving access for people to see those comments. I just simply think it was, you know, kind of bad advice. If somebody's overweight, but they're going through weight loss surgery and they already know that they have binge problems and they're working on it, I don't see any benefit in telling them they need to lose 100 pounds because they already know that. But anyway, let's check out Rufus and Lisa here from Beyond Authentic. They've got a new challenge. They need to lose weight so that they can go through their gender reaffirming surgery. Hope you enjoy. Hi, welcome to our channel. I'm Rufus. I'm Lisa and our new channel is called Beyond Authentic because this follows our lives. Now, we wanted to do an introductory video to explain a little bit about what the channel was about, didn't we? Yeah. So, I guess the first thing we should really mention is that we are a transgender couple. Um, now, some of you might be surprised by that, some of you might not be surprised by that. Um, so the topics that we're going to cover on our channel aren't really about our transgender life, they're about our journey. Um, and our journeys are moving towards reducing our BMI so that both of us can have gender affirming surgery. Um, so that's probably said quite a lot about us, just in that first couple of yeah. sentences, hasn't it, really? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, about being trans? Um, I, didn't, I didn't come out um, as being trans until um, my late 30s. Um, I've been on my journey, I think, like four, nearly four years now. Yeah, about four years. Um, I have been to, obviously, the gender clinic. Um, had my first opinion and been uh, put on put put back off the waiting list um, until I get my BMI down. Um, so I have to reduce my BMI till it gets to I think 38, and then I have to then be re-referred, go back through my doctor, um, and be put on the waiting list on a, another waiting list that shouldn't take quite as long, so that I can be fast tracked through for surgery. The top surgery that is. And for me, I'm still at the GIC, the, the Gender Identity Clinic. I'm still going through their services. Mm. Um, but again, I know that if I don't get my BMI down, I'm going to be in the same situation um, as Rufus. All right. So tell me uh, what you guys think down in the comments. You have a situation where Rufus, who I got to be honest, if I saw Rufus in the grocery store, I would assume that Rufus was born a man. Rufus was born a female and obviously wants to go through gender reaffirming surgery. I, I think Rufus very much carries himself like like a man. This is the uh, what Angela Hodgson 
1354 had to say, Love your openness and honesty. You are a lovely couple. Wishing you lots of success on your weight loss and personal journeys. Really enjoying your videos. Lots of helps and tips. I joined SW on July 4th of 2017 after lots of health problems. I have to date lost 28 and a half pounds in about 14 weeks. Still have a way to go, but am determined to get to the target. Very interesting. Whenever you have a situation where you have a trans couple and they're talking about their weight loss, then all of a sudden you're able to help a community of people that might have felt like they didn't have another trans couple or somebody that they can, you know, maybe get this information from. If you think that uh, this is kind of an interesting dynamic, let me know down in the comments. I'm now a size 20, 22, so the weight's coming off. Um, it's just that we found that trying to do it by ourselves wasn't really working, yeah. was it? But you'd done something well before. I had. I mean, I'd done it before um, in a previous location where I was living. Um, then I basically moved, moved away. Life kind of got in the way of things, and I thought I could just... I'd done so well. I'd lost like seven and a half stone. I thought I could kind of do it myself. Um, that didn't really happen. Over time, I'd sort of gradually put the weight back on. But for me now, it was just a case of, okay, well, this, it's not really a diet what we're doing now. So really for me, it's just a retraining yourself of a healthier lifestyle and making better choices of the food that you do eat. It's a food optimizing um, plan. Yeah. Mm. So that's, um, yeah, it's not really a diet. It's, I mean, people say a diet. I, my, what I used to get told of, of being on a diet would be, oh, just reduce the amount you eat. Uh, cut, cut your food down or on the meals, have smaller meals, so have a lot less food. But in that way, you're depriving yourself. So it's not something you're ever going to stick to if you like to feel you're somebody that likes to fill your tummy up and feel rather full, which I've always kind of been that sort of person. You know, a life-changing thing that we're doing at the moment, going to Slimming World, and it's more than likely going to be something I'm going to stick with now for forever. That's pretty much SW, Slimming World. I think that's what they're saying. So their English is not quite Americanized English, right? But it sounds like they're saying Slimming World. If I am right, let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comment. Much it for me. So. See, I'd never done swimming well before. And in fact, from being a teenager, I had problems with my weight from being sort of 13, 14. Now, it's quite a true thing that a lot of trans people will try and self-sabotage their lives in some way. So some people will have alcohol or, or drug problems that they've never been an issue for me. I can take it or leave it. Uh, other people will self-harm or will have eating disorders. Now, I had suffered from something called binge eating disorder, which is basically comfort eating taken to the next level um, and from a teenager I, I started having weight issues um, my mum was big my dad was big my grandparents were big so all the way through weight was always an issue for me I didn't really love who I was I wasn't even you know I wasn't even fond of who I was I didn't even like who I was it was a way of keeping other people at A. It was a much easier sort of thing to, to go through life, never having to admit that one thing that I didn't want to admit to myself. Um, and I put a video on, and in fact, I'll redo the video and put it onto this channel as well, um, of me going to Slimming World, because you went for, I think it was three weeks, didn't you, before I went, um, before I joined up. And for those three weeks, all I heard, all I heard, was Slimming World. So anyway, so I, I then joined Slimming World, and when you join, you get one of these packs, which has got all sorts of information in it. But this is your, this is your Bible, your food optimizing book. Um, and in it, it's got all the different foods you can have. Now, I'm hearing snoring in the background. I don't know if it's Rufus or if it's a dog, but if you can also hear that snoring, let me know. I have a feeling it's the dog. I can't get over Rufus's mannerisms. Rufus is like the perfect name for this person, right? But what's interesting is if you were going to pick a name, right? Let's say you identified as a man and you were born as a woman. You're going through this transformation in your life. Do you think Rufus would be the name that you would pick? Let me know down in the comments what you think of the uh, the name selection for Rufus. We are... 
Well, it, it's, as we're filming this, we're about to go and get weighed in the morning. So you are nearly eight weeks, but you're seven weeks officially on Swimming World, and yeah. you've lost how much? I've lost one stone and six and a half pound. One stone, six and a half pound. So close to your stone and a half. And I've lost, weeks. I've lost 11 pounds in three weeks. Now we live... I mean, the first, the first few weeks, it was kind of like we'd be walking around, go shopping, and it would be like... Oh God, we can't have that. How many sins is that? How many sins is this food? How many? And then learning, we're, we're getting there. You know, yogurts and stuff, what we may have chose before, we've substituted for something else, which um, has zero fat in it, but tastes really, really nice. So again, I'm going to link uh, Rufus and Lisa's channel down in our description. If you want to take a look at their channel where they talk about their transformation, or if you want to, you know, check out their weight loss journey together, you'll be able to easily do so. Let's read another one of their viewers' comments. This is from Frey Allergonswald, 4746. Sorry if I butchered that name. I've loved hearing your story. Your weight loss stories have inspired me to keep going on mine. I initially needed to lose weight to have a knee replacement. I also have Crohn's disease, which was unstable. The great thing is I've lost over three stone and now no longer need the, need the knee surgery. I really hope you both get your BMI down enough to start the process of getting your gender affirming surgeries. I've always believed love is genderless. You fall in love with the person and the soul. The rest is immaterial. I can't imagine your journey so far have been easy, but I wish you all the very best for the future. Keep up the good work. All the very best. I think we can all agree we want them to have a successful, happy future together, and we also want them to get to the healthy weight they need to get to in order to make that happen. If you guys want to have a successful weight in your future or a successful future, period, go get your shoes. Let's go for a walk. I can do this, but I always knew that I could. You can do this, and now you know that you can. We, we can do this. We got this, trust me, regardless of the heat, regardless of the rain, regardless of the snow, we got this. So, with that being said, good morning. Happy Sunday. Let's do this, shall we? So I'm out here this morning and it's warm as all heck, but you know what? It's always warm as all heck. So what do we do? We put our foot, one foot in front of the other and we just get used. We just get used to it. And you wanna know something else? When the weather cools down as we head into the fall, you're going to be able to go right into the fall like a champion because you're going to be a handful of pounds less than you are today. Your diet and exercise plan is going to start getting stronger in your life. And the way we're doing it, one little step at a time, baby stepping if you will, we're making it more duplicatable, right? That's kind of the key to success. You got to be able to do something and then duplicate it with regularity. Well, guys, that's what we're doing here. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you wear socks and you want to make sure that you wear good shoes. You don't want to get blisters. If you do get blisters, don't try to power through them. Trust me, it'll make your feet miserable. Try to get uh, blister pads. Good morning. Try to get blister pads. Try to wear shoes that don't rub against the back of your ankle or the back of your heel. Those things can be really tough. But the main thing that you want to do is you don't want to quit. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if where you live is super duper hot, then you're just going to have to set your alarm. Wake up and on the weekends, don't sleep in. 
get outside and get on to your walk. And you know what's interesting? People like to sleep in on the weekends, but you know what that does? That makes the weekend go even faster. What you wanna do is you wanna wake up early on the weekend, unless you're in your 20s and you just had a bender, but you wanna ultimately wake up early on the weekend because that gives you a chance to extend the weekend. I don't know about you, but I want my weekend to feel like two, maybe even three days. I don't want it to feel like 12 hours because I was sleeping for most of it. So again, if you're 24, 25 and you just drank till three in the morning, sure, sleep in, you know? But if you're my age, if you're in your mid 40s, there's no reason for you to sleep in. Just wake up at your normal time, maybe even wake up a little bit earlier and get outside. Don't make me tell you again. Go get your shoes, God bless it. So I literally just woke up a couple minutes ago and the news last night said that uh, it's gonna be particularly hot today. But I look and it's gonna be 111 and it's like, you know, why did you even mention that? It was 118 last week. What's 111? No big deal. We got this. You know, some of you guys live in areas where this time of year, it's the nicest time of year. You know, like Lily, you up there in Canada, you're probably getting, what, 85 degree weather at the hottest part of the summer? That sounds like, that sounds like the best time of the year to me. So what are your plans for the weekend? Are you gonna be meeting up with friends and family? Are you gonna be going on a walk that's a little bit longer than normal? What happens when it rains where you live today? Sean shared a picture of the rain forecast for the week. Sean, when it's raining hardcore, you just gotta kinda play it by ear. If the walk goes on, wonderful. But if it's flooding and really gnarly outside, Sometimes you just got to walk inside or get a little bit of a gym membership. If you guys have gym memberships, maybe let me know down in the uh, comments. And if you have a gym membership, do you like going in and walking on the treadmill? Or do you view the gym as a place where you like to lift weights and get on all the stationary machines and you like to keep your walk to outside? I'm one of these people that I say, if your gym is within two or three miles of your home, why don't you contemplate the idea of walking to your gym and then having your spouse pick you up when you're done, unless you're the type that you can go ahead and walk home as well. If you go to see people that, that go to the gym regularly, a lot of times they have power lifter bodies, but they're not very powerful. In other words, when men go to the gym, Ladies, you guys should know this. When men go to the gym, we think we're gonna start lifting and all of a sudden our muscles are gonna bulge out like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it does not work that way. Most people end up working out and you would never know they work out. It just, it, their body, it just has no effect on them. The reason that is, is because places like your abs and stuff, you have plenty of muscle there. But the reason most people's abs never show is because you have a layer of fat over them. So when you eliminate the sugar, and you can do that over the course of two or three weeks with a little bit of willpower and self-discipline, what happens is you force your body to kind of feed off the fat. And where do most men have their fat? In their gut. Where do most women have their fat? In their hips and the back of their arms. So the reality is when you quit the sugar, when you start doing things like push-ups and sit-ups, a lot of times that's the key to getting your abs and stuff to show. So it's not necessarily doing sit-ups. You actually get more out of eliminating sugar. And what'll happen is your abs will slowly start to show. And then at that point, if you kind of raise your knees up while hanging, or if you do push-ups and sit-ups at that point, it probably does help those muscles grow a little bit. But again, you already have plenty of muscle on your body, ladies and gentlemen. It's just covered by a layer of fat. So again, even if you're in your 40s or your 50s and you think, oh, it's too late for me, don't think like that. Just try to give up sugar for three or four weeks. See what happens. At the end of three or four weeks, hopefully you can keep avoiding sugar but even if you can't, 
hopefully in that three or four weeks you could have a situation where your muscles and abs start to pop out a little bit more and you can see that I'm not fooling with you. I'm being honest with you. Feels a little bit humid. You know, it's interesting, the last uh, weekend it was supposed to rain and they say here in the upcoming days there's a 30% chance it might rain again. But we're in one of those states that half the time they tell us it's gonna rain for somewhat odd reasons. Sometimes it doesn't. And you feel cheated. It's like, hey, the weatherman told me it was gonna rain. And it's not raining, gosh darn it. Gosh darn it, I think it's gosh darn it. But when I first started this channel, what was it, uh, at the end of February, the beginning of March, somewhere around there, it was still pleasantly cool outside where you could actually wear a light jacket, maybe even a heavy jacket if it was early in the morning. And so many people were like, let's do this, I'm on, I wanna do this 90 day challenge with you. And over the last uh, month or so, since we started the second challenge, guys, I haven't noticed nearly as many people saying I'm with you. And let's be honest, what's the reason for that? Could it be that Walk Talk Vent is boring and no one wants to walk? No, it's a little bit boring because it's a walking channel, right? But I think people do genuinely want to walk. But when you're overweight and even an air conditioning room can bring a sweat on, a lot of times you guys, when you're severely overweight, don't really like the idea of walking when it's this hot outside. But the reason I want you guys to contemplate challenging that is because tomorrow never comes. So if you tell yourself I'm gonna work out in a couple of weeks or in the fall, there's a good chance that day will never come. But the second reason is because let's say you had been walking for nine months. You lost a whole bunch of weight and lo and behold, now it's 100 degree weather during the summer. Well, when that happens, what are you gonna do? Quit every summer? watch that weight come back on you gosh i wonder if that has anything to do with these studies that constantly tell us that we're going to gain the weight back maybe they know the reality that the walker's achilles heel is the weather you know if you live in a state where it rains three or four times a week you know like i know in new orleans it rains just constantly i know in florida you have situations where you get sun showers every day right and if you live in places like Portland, Oregon, or Portland, Maine, you're always gonna be dealing with the elements, right? So the reality is, the Achilles heel to the walker is the weather, the outdoors itself. So there's two ways you can handle that. You can either get some sort of membership or decide that, hey, I'm gonna turn my living room or the spare room of my house into a makeshift little gym and you can start walking indoors on those days, or what you can try to do is try your darndest to actually get used to being uncomfortable. You know, Mala, you were kind of joking and laughing with me because I brought up David Goggins. That guy can run a, a 10K race or a 6K race, you know, with a broken leg. So what's your excuse? You know, it's warm outside. You're, you're, breaking a sweat. God, don't you guys remember when we were eight, nine, 10 years old on the playground at school and recess sounded? We didn't let the heat of the day stop us. We went out there and regardless if it was raining or not, we wanted to be outside playing. Gosh, we used to have a rainy day schedule when I was a kid, where when it was one of those rare days when it rained, for some reason they wouldn't let us out on the playground. They would only let us on the blacktop or they would actually keep us indoors and we would play quiet ball. It was really weird because if it's raining outside and there's lightning at at attached to it, I could see them not wanting you to go outside. But keep in mind, we're talking in Arizona rain where it's just sprinkling half the time, you know? But yeah, for whatever reason, when I was a kid, when it rained, they wouldn't let us out. But here's the cool thing, guys. We're all adults now. This channel doesn't even get seen by kids that, were, that are 18 and under. I only have it going to adults. So I know for a fact you're over age 18. So my thinking is, big deal that it's raining. If you have to take an umbrella with you, take an umbrella. 
If it's super hot and you don't have very many shaded areas, guess what? People take an umbrella even during the hot of the summer. Grab your umbrella and go. So at this time of the year, it's really damage control for us walkers. How can we maintain our walk? How can we maintain the integrity of our group? Well, the number one thing you're gonna to have to remember is that when it comes to winter time, I'm gonna think in my head, hey, we're good, everybody's ready to walk. But the winter time is when it's gonna be challenging for you. Right now, it's the summer where you live, Lily. It might be beautiful every single day. But in the winter, you gotta pre-plan what your attack is gonna be when it's frozen outside. You know, what if there's three or four feet of snow? Every time they say it's three or four feet, it looks like it's seven feet of snow to me. You know, every time it's 10, 15 degrees outside, you got to add that wind chill, uh, wind chill, right? So there's always going to be situations where, you know, you don't necessarily want to leave out of your house. But you want to know what? Every day you're still going to be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner and your snacks. Every day, you're still gonna have to walk by aisles in the grocery store where there's Twinkies and donuts to buy, right? So the main thing is, is we have to jump into our think tank and be proactive. I tried conversing with you guys about this about two months ago, because about two months ago is when the weather here in Arizona started creeping up into the 90s and even occasionally kissing the 100 degree mark. So when that happens, and it's only May, well, you know that June, July, and August are gonna be kind of warm. And so I kind of saw this coming, but when you're in Arizona, you know, it doesn't take a genius to tell you it's gonna be hot during the summer. But like I said, where you live, you might have to deal with rainy seasons. You might have to deal with snowfall. And again, I firmly think that walking is the absolute best exercise the world's ever seen. This is my opinion. Some people say swimming, some people say this, that, and the other. I think it's walking. We can come out every single day. And if you can get to the point where nothing stops you, whether it's rain, sleet, or snow, you're gonna be unstoppable. So again, sometimes willpower is not this unbelievable mountain that we climb. Sometimes it's just keep go. It's just about putting one foot in front of the other and not stopping okay now here's another thing that that we that i like to talk about when it comes to willpower i don't have the willpower to go work out at the gym five days a week because i've never enjoyed it and i've tried going to the gym throughout my whole life right i don't enjoy lifting weights anymore when i was in high school and shortly thereafter i enjoyed lifting weights and i did it a lot but it was because I enjoyed it. You know, I wanted it to better me at sports or I wanted to have an advantage. One of the things I found out that is that in sports, a lot of times lifting weights and exercise doesn't give you an advantage. What it does is it actually makes you competitive. And what I mean by that is if you don't lift weights and you're in sports, you're gonna go up against people that are and you're gonna get destroyed. So that's why we work out in high school and in college when it comes to athletics because if you don't try to make your body the most efficient machine that you can you're going to get dominated when it comes to sports well guys real life is kind of like this as well if you want your 50s 60s 70s and 80s to be as nice as they possibly can then you have to prepare for that now if you're in your 50s right now and you're developing this walking routine right now, number one, it's never too late. Even if you're in your 60s or 70s, what's it gonna hurt you to walk? If you're able to walk, get outside, let's walk to the fullest, right? But if you're in your 40s, 50s or so, and you start walking now, you're gonna be that guy or gal that when you're in your 70s, people are gonna marvel and they're gonna tell their kids and their grandkids, you wanna be like that person. You see how they're walking? I see them walking every day. And when, they're, and when they're talking about this person, they're gonna be talking about you. And that's gonna be the key to your secret sauce. When people come up to you and they say, hey, Edith, what's your secret sauce? How are you out here every day? How do you look so healthy? You're gonna be able to tell them, hey, 
when I was in my 40s or 50s, I decided to embark on a walking routine. Why, Edith? Well, because I noticed in my 40s and 50s that I wasn't really able to lift weights with the veracity that I was able to do in my 20s. So if you can't lift weights and your goals are no longer to look like a bodybuilder, but they're to be as healthy as you possibly can, then you owe it to yourself to start a walking routine. And Edith, if you can start telling that to people, that's a good sign. If you are a grandma and you have your grandkids over, your grandkids are gonna go down a couple of different paths. The first path that we hope they go through is one of an athlete, right? Where they're constantly active, they're constantly involved in sports. In order to play sports, at least when I was in school, you had to maintain a certain grade point average, right? So if your kids are going down the avenue of sports, they probably got a good chance to be healthy in their life, right? As long as even when they're done with sports, they still stay active, right? The other avenue that a lot of kids are taking now is that of a video gamer or somebody that watches TikTok videos all day. If they're starting to get chunky now, Grandma, then by the time they're in their 20s and 30s, they're gonna be on pace to live a shorter lifespan than their parents. And I don't know about you, but if you are in your 20s and you're watching this, like Imogen, I think you said you're in your 20s, right? Do you really want to have a situation where your parents outlive you? You know, do you really want a situation where you bury your mom or dad when they're 70 and then your kids are burying you a couple, a couple of years later while you're in your 50s or 60s? No, what you need to do is you need to put the video games down, put the phone down, and you need to get outside and start walking. That's just the way it is. And the reason walking is so optimal is because it doesn't really provide that much stress on your knees, ankles, and hips. But at the same time, it develops enough muscle in your lower body where hopefully you don't need to use those scooters that they provide at the grocery stores. So again, this is the toughest time of year. I'm probably not even talking to very many new venters. I'm talking to people that have decided to become venters, but they already are walkers, right? So they feel like this is their community. And I'm also talking to older venters like Mala and Lily, Sean, Lupe. Lupe, I haven't heard from you in a while. Hopefully you're still with us. I know that a couple months ago, Lupe, if you guys remember, was constantly talking about walking with her grandkids, okay? There have been some people that were constantly talking with us every day that haven't been talking with us lately. That's for two reasons. The first reason, sometimes when you like a YouTuber, a couple months later, you might be onto a complete new thread of YouTube videos that you like. So they might've liked the show for temporary and then went away. But another reason is because as the summer temperatures got hot, they didn't go into their think tank they didn't come up with a proactive plan, even though I was urging a lot of people, come up with a plan. Why do I say this? Because if you think about it, let's take the perfect temperature. Let's say you guys agree with me that the absolute perfect temperature is 74 degrees. 74 or 75, I love that temperature. Keep in mind, it's because I'm an Arizonan. For you, it might be closer to 64 or 65 degrees, right? But the reason I say this is because if every day it was that temperature, 70 degrees, you would walk every single day because it's the perfect temperature, right? But the reality is we don't live in a world where it's 70 degrees every day. We live in worlds of extremes. During the winter, you're gonna potentially have snowfall. During the summer, you're gonna potentially be at risk for a sunburn. So what you want to do is you want to have a plan. This is something that I tell everybody from the get-go. We're going to walk seven days a week for the rest of our lives. So whether you like it or not, you have to come up with a plan. Sean, I like your plan. Your plan is, hey, I don't care if rain, sleet, or snow, or shine, the walk must go on. Guys, we got to look at the walk like it's the show, right? In show business, the show must go on the walk must continue. Now I've been contemplating buying a walking pad, but here's the thing. There's no real days out here, even when it's raining, that I can't walk. 
it might be challenging for me to walk with the rain going down because I have a camera, right? But if I have to get an umbrella, I have to get an umbrella. And even then, when it rains in Arizona, it's not like it rains nonstop. I could probably still pick times during the day where I could walk. So I'm hoping that the monsoons, when they do hit, if they do hit, I'm hoping they don't bother me. One year from now, I plan to be this weight or maybe even a couple pounds less. What are your goals? Do you want to be the same weight you are or less? Or do you plan on being the same weight you are or more? Because you know there is a, cor a curse to, to exercise. If you build up a lot of muscle and then you stop, a lot of times that muscle ends up turning to flab. So again, here's the, uh, here's the workout person's curse. Once you get started, you gotta keep going. And if you don't believe me, just look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's body. That guy just looks like a flab machine now. And I'm serious. Google Arnold Schwarzenegger without his shirt on. And you'll see an old guy that doesn't look like a weight lifter at all. He looks, he looks very, very fat. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure if he was a little bit younger and I'm sure if he hit the gym like crazy, I'm sure he could solidify that fat because he knows legitimate strategies to build his muscles, right? And if somebody uh, has enough money to go to the doctor and get on TRT or HRT, it's Arnold, right? But I don't know about you guys, I think when you see people in their 70s and 80s and they're ripped up, to me it looks like they're on TRT or steroids. And what's funny is they always tell you the same thing. Oh, this is the same amount of testosterone I had when I was younger. It's nothing major, just a tiny bit. Meanwhile, they're practically drinking testosterone when you're not looking, right? I think, I think testosterone is probably no different for men than what Govi and Ozempic is for overweight people. They're always talking about upping their dosage. Well, imagine you're taking testosterone and all of a sudden you're getting in better and better shape and all of a sudden you start to have these fantasies of being 25 again, I could see those people going to their doctor and saying, up my dosage, doc. And if any of you guys are on HRT or TRT and you notice that by going on the hormones you feel young and youthful again, good for you. But let me know if my thoughts are right. Is it one of those things where after you're on it, you wanna up your dosage, you know? My thinking is whenever you add a crutch to the body, the body gets used to it. What do you mean, Jesse? Well, if you, if you naturally produce testosterone, but for some reason you feel lethargic, you feel like you're getting flabby, a lot of times the world will tell you, hey, you've got low T. You need to go get with the hormone specialist and get on a testosterone plan. Well, there's only one problem with that. If you are legitimately low T and you need testosterone and stuff, Great, it's there as an option, wonderful. I want you to have that youthful feeling again. But right when you start adding testosterone to the body, it sends a signal to your body to quit producing it yourself. So right along with what are the advantages of taking testosterone, you should probably Google and YouTube videos on what are the side effects of testosterone. Google videos that start with the words, why I quit TRT or why I decided against TRT. And what you'll find is that when a lot of people get off of it, they don't recover. Their testosterone never comes back. And so they're kind of in this weird, in this weird quandary where it's like, okay, do I wanna go back to literally feeling like an old person to an even more extreme? Or do I wanna stay on this testosterone for the rest of my life? And that's the same thing you have to ask with Wagovi and Ozempic and stuff. I don't like the idea of being stuck on any type of drug for the rest of my life. There's nothing normal about that. Yes, there's people that take insulin from forever. They've always been type one diabetics and they take insulin and they take these different medications. You've all grown up with kids that have asthma and they take their asthma inhaler with them everywhere, right? Because I have a sales background, I know how sales work. Sales work in a way where people are trying to sell you on trying something, and these are medications that once you try them, you're stuck on them forever. Now, I'm not saying try 
you know, insulin and, and try, you know, statins and stuff like that. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm getting at more with, you know, performance enhancing stuff and Wagovi and stuff like that. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've started to notice an upward tick in Wagovi and Manjaro commercials. And guess what? The commercial always has a really fun background song and the commercial always talks about them losing weight. In other words, it's a sales commercial. Doesn't that make anybody's red flags go up besides me? They're not selling you this idea that you're gonna be healthier. They're selling this idea that you're gonna look better because they know that that's what sells. You wanna be back in your high school body. They wanna sell you a medication that when your insurance declines you on it going forward, you're gonna jump through every hoop you can and pay whatever it costs because you don't wanna go from thin Sally to chunky Sally again. So I'm telling you guys. And then there's also videos of, hey, I've been off of Wagovi for six months. The weight comes back with a vengeance. For people that are some way, somehow able to keep the weight off, they've got to do what we're talking about anyway. Walking every day, exercising every day, eating realistically rather than obsessively, right? So again, if you're contemplating taking these drugs, I'm glad that they're there for you. And I'm glad that they're there for me if I ever need them. But you wanna to try to keep away from that stuff as long as you can. And guys, if you're having trouble where you feel like you have low testosterone, try our plan for 90 days. The testosterone is still gonna be there for you 100 days from now, right? But if during the 90 days you can lose some of that gut fat and all of a sudden your sex life is invigorated or all of a sudden you feel like you can play the pickup basketball game, you know, at the gym now, you might not need testosterone. Don't take stuff you don't need. That's the moral of the story. And have a great day. Take an extra walk.